In today's video, I want to discuss three stocks I am actively adding to my portfolio in January. It is becoming increasingly challenging to find value in the markets though, so I am adding to positions that I already own and have discussed in depth on my channel before. I wish I could be a buyer of more stocks, but again, I am just not seeing that much value in the markets anymore. If you're new here, I also want to let you know that in June of 2022, I created a YouTube portfolio challenge to see if I can beat the S&P 500 over the long term. I am happy to say that this portfolio is outperforming the S&P 500, and I believe that it will continue to do so. I also update the channel regularly on all the stocks I am buying and selling within this portfolio, and why. So if you would like to follow along, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. But with that being said, let's now dive into the video. The first stock is Brookfield Corporation, which is probably not a surprise to longtime viewers of my channel. I discuss Brookfield a lot, so let me update you all on some recent news and my thoughts on the business now. This morning, Brookfield announced that it is going to buy ATC India for $2.5 billion and to become the country's top telecom tower firm. It actually bought these towers off of American Tower. Further down in this article, it says Brookfield Asset Management will buy American Tower Corp's loss-making Indian operation for $2.5 billion, it said Friday becoming the country's largest operator of telecom towers amid booming demand for data and wider use of 5G services. The acquisition is the biggest of Brookfield's three telecom-related deals in the roughly four years the Canadian company has been present in India, the world's second largest market by number of subscribers. So Brookfield is buying these telecom towers off of American Tower. American Tower is currently going through a strategic restructuring or a strategic review, so it seems like they are selling some of their assets, and Brookfield is a buyer of these assets. And after this acquisition, again, Brookfield is becoming India's largest operator of telecom towers. Moving on, this says, ATC, on the other hand, will exit India after nearly 17 years. Its fortunes have floundered due to the struggles of top client Vodafone India, and it recently wrote down the value of the business by $322 million. Brookfield, whose so-called anchor client Reliance Industries, will be in a better position to manage the challenge that ATC had with high exposure to Vodafone idea. So basically, American Tower was struggling with its top client to generate revenue and cash flow with its towers that it had in India. However, Brookfield's top client is Reliance Industries, and this company has seen a lot of demand for towers in India, so under the ownership of Brookfield, these towers should become profitable and see growth over the long term. Because again, Reliance Industries is their number one client that's going to be using them. Continuing on, this says the Indian telecom market, where according to the Ericsson report, the number of 5G subscribers will quadruple by 2027. So there is a massive boom in demand for data in India right now which means that these telecom towers should see continued growth and a lot of demand over the coming years as well. In fact, in 2023, the average Indian used about 31.66 gigabytes per month of data, and this is projected to grow to 61.8 gigabytes per month by 2028, which is roughly double. So there is going to be a lot more smartphones in India, and the amount of data per smartphone is also projected to double. This should create a nice compounding effect for the amount of data being consumed in India and the data demand. Brookfield also recently put out a 2023 summary and update for the business, and this says, As we approach the end of 2023, and with a lot going on, we decided to take the opportunity to reflect on key highlights from the year and provide a summary of some recent notable achievements. We were very active during 2023 amidst a broader market slowdown. In total, we deployed $55 billion of capital into some of the largest and most attractive investment opportunities globally across a variety of sectors. At the same time, monetizations totaled over $30 billion, generating strong returns for investors and underlying the fact that high-quality assets that form the backbone of the global economy remain in strong demand. All told, almost $100 billion of financings were arranged across our businesses, and access to capital continues to be very strong. So in 2023, Brookfield deployed $55 billion of capital. And remember, 2023, around the beginning of the year, was a time where a lot of investors were very pessimistic about the global economy and markets in general. Brookfield took advantage of this. And this is why I like Brookfield so much, because they are value investors. So when other investors are fearful, and when the overall economy looks like it's not going to be that good, they're happy to deploy tens of billions of dollars and buy assets when they are selling under fair value. They do not get caught up in the fear that goes on in the global economy, and instead they try to take advantage of it. 
Brookfield's CEO, Bruce Flatt, also recently did a podcast, and in this podcast, he noted how the demand for nuclear is going to explode over the coming decades, and how nuclear is absolutely necessary for the global economy to truly become carbon neutral. Brookfield is also investing heavily in nuclear power, and this came out recently as well. U.S. leads coalition to triple nuclear power by 2050 in an effort to address climate change. Then further down in this article, it says, other major economies that signed on to the agreement include Canada, the world's second largest uranium producer, France, a global leader in nuclear energy, the United Kingdom, and Japan, which suffered a devastating nuclear accident in 2011 triggered by an earthquake and tsunami. The declaration is the most concrete step taken by major nations to place nuclear power at the center of the push to transition to clean energy. Interest in nuclear is booming worldwide, amid growing recognition that the more dependable source of clean energy will be needed to support the rapidly growing role of wind and solar in power grids. Nuclear is one of the few clean energy sources that can provide power without interruption when wind and solar are not available due to weather conditions. So the United States and 20 other major economies signed this coalition that they are going to triple their nuclear power production by 2050, and they are going to invest heavily in nuclear power. And this is because nuclear power is one of the only sources of energy that we can use to support our grids when wind and solar are not operating well. Then further down this says, nuclear power capacity needs to more than double from 417 gigawatts in 2022 to more than 900 gigawatts in 2050 to achieve net, to achieve net zero carbon emissions by that year. Nuclear capacity increased 40% worldwide in 2022 with China, Finland, Korean, and Pakistan leading the way. More than 40% of the 61 nuclear plants currently under construction are in China. So worldwide nuclear capacity increased by 40% in 2022. However, it looks like China is leading the way here, and in my opinion, the Western world needs to catch up, and I believe that they are now doing so. So I also believe that the nuclear industry will see significant growth over the coming three decades and over the long term. And this is why I am also happy to see Brookfield investing in nuclear. So in my opinion, I am happy to see that Brookfield is performing so well, continuing to be a value investor and making smart investments in industries that should continue to grow over the extremely long term. And I am talking over the coming decades. This is why I am so bullish on the company over the long term, because they really are value investors that try to invest over the extremely long term, and the company has an incredible track record of doing so. And for these reasons, I am happy to continue adding to my Brookfield position in January, even though it is already the largest position in my portfolio by far. All right, moving on to the second stock that I am buying in January. This one is Topicus.com. This is also a stock that I have been adding to my portfolio over the past few months, but I am continuing to increase my position. The reason why is because Topicus is a spinoff of Constellation Software. And you have probably heard me say on my channel that Constellation Software is one of the best businesses that I have ever seen. And since Topicus is a spinoff of Constellation Software, it means that the company is basically the same as Constellation Software. It is just based over in Europe, but it has the same but the business has the same culture as Constellation Software, the same business model, and the same focus on creating shareholder value. Now, if we take a look at Topicus on its own, we can see that its revenue has been increasing very well since 2020. In fact, in the fourth quarter of 2020, Topicus produced about 493 million euros in revenue, and in the most recent quarter, it has now produced over 1 billion. So its quarterly revenue has more than doubled since 2020. Now, if we also go over to the company's cash flow statement and we take a look at the trailing 12 months, in 2020, it produced about 152 million euros in operating cash flow. And in the trailing 12 months now, it has produced about 232 million euros. So its operating cash flows and its profits are also growing with the revenue. And I do like to see this. Now, lastly here, if we go over to the insider transactions on Topicus, we can see that insiders are consistently increasing their positions in the company by quite a substantial amount as well. Here is a buy of $441,000, another one of $943,000, another $400,000 buy, another $675,000, $350,000, and $164,000. So these people are buying a significant amount of Topicus shares, and insiders all over the place are continuing to buy, buy, buy. I love to see this, and I think that it does signal that the insiders are heavily motivated to see the stock continue to go up over the long term, and protect shareholder value. However, there is not a lot of investor material on Topicus, so there's not a lot that I can really show you here outside of their financials and my overall thesis on the business. 
Basically, I think that this is just a smaller Constellation software, and I do think that this is a high quality business and a serial acquirer that should continue to grow shareholder value over the long term as well. All right, moving on to the third and final stock that I am actively buying in January. And this one is Equitable Bank. This is a mid cap Canadian digital bank that is growing incredibly well. The stock is currently trading for all time highs, but I am still happy to continue adding to my position because even though the stock is selling for all time highs, I do think that it is undervalued. And here's why. Equitable Bank is currently trading for a price to earnings ratio of 7.8. Now, if we head over to the company's financials, though, and we take a look at its income statement, take a look for yourself at the business's revenue growth. It is absolutely exploding and it is continuing to accelerate. Back in 2003, the company was producing about $23 million in trailing 12 months revenue. And today, the company is now producing $1.2 billion in revenue. And if we zoom in here, we can see that for the year of 2021, Equitable Bank produced about $643 million in revenue. And again, the company is now producing about $1.2 billion in revenue. So the revenue has nearly doubled in just the past two years. This company is growing insanely well, and I am very happy with its fundamental growth. Now, if we also take a look at the business's net income, we can see that it is sitting at about $408 million now, and it is exploding with the revenue, and it is sitting at an all-time high now. Equitable Bank also put out their 2024 projections, and their earnings are projected to grow by roughly 20% again in 2024. So the company is seeing a lot of fundamental growth and it is projecting to continue seeing strong fundamental growth over the next year. Now, if we also take a look at the business's dividends, we can see that the dividend per share is growing insanely well and it is projected to grow another 25% in 2024 as well. The five-year dividend compounded annual growth rate is currently sitting at 24.26% and the company is projecting to continue growing its dividend at this rate in the future. So even though its dividend is only about 1.8% today, if it can continue to grow at 25% annually, then this dividend yield could become quite significant over the long term. So it is a very strong dividend growth stock as well. So when I take a look at Equitable Bank, I see a business that is growing its revenue and earnings by 15 to 20% annually and consistently, but also trading for a price to earnings ratio of only 7.8. This is an earnings yield of 12.75%, which basically means that if Equitable Bank wanted to pay out all of its earnings as a dividend, then it could pay out a nearly 13% dividend today. So when I take a look at how much cash this business can return to me versus the price that I am paying, it is a roughly 13% on the cost of the shares today, which in my opinion is a very high earnings yield. Additionally, this earnings yield is growing at roughly 15 to 20% annually. So I'm getting a high earnings yield on cost, a very high earnings yield on cost, and the earnings yield is also growing quite well. So in my opinion, again, yes, this stock is trading for all-time highs today, but based on its fundamentals, its growth, and its price today, I do think that it is significantly undervalued, and I am continuing to add to my position. But that is going to wrap up the video, everyone. And if you did enjoy this video, then please remember to leave a like on it, as it does really help out my channel. Also, if you're new here and you want to see more stock market-related content like this, then please consider subscribing to my channel as well, because that would be pretty awesome too. But that's going to wrap up the video for today, everyone. Thank you again so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it, and I really hope to see you all again in my next one.